Hey you guys, it's Kiara. Welcome to my channel. This is gonna be a casual chit chatty video, so get some popcorn. Just enjoy this video. So I got my PR last year. Finally, I was able to visit India after three years. I kind of made a promise to myself that when I do get PR, I'll reward myself with a really good and long vacation, uh, which was overdue. So that's what I did. So I did two months India and I booked my flight tickets to Thailand for almost two months. Um, to go on a solo journey, best decision ever. I was definitely nervous, is an understatement. To be honest, everything just got figured out like I thought it would. I'm gonna go through all my memories and start from the very beginning. I went from Mumbai, comfort zone, to Goa, kinda dipped my toe in some freedom, and then from Goa, I left for Thailand. So the first place I landed in Thailand was Phuket. What I did do is plan the first three days of my trip, and after that, I just decided to go with the flow. And because I was solo, I was able to do that because I had no one else to worry about or ask what they wanna do. So I really loved that. I checked into a hotel for the first night. This is the room. The room is quite exact to what I saw on the Hopo app. So that's good. That's a relief. I really like the room a lot. And the view, amazing. It was kind of isolated. Uh, there were no grocery stores around, nothing much going on. I am so sweaty and disgustingly dressed also. <laughs> I just landed a while ago. So I took the room in Karol. I honestly felt a little lonely that day. I remember calling my best friend and I was like, what am I doing? Friends and family back in India to full on solo was a big jump, but she knocked some sense into me. She gave me some of her sunshine and made me realize that this is an opportunity to really enjoy myself. I'm in a foreign land on vacation, enjoy my hotel room and go out the next day and explore. And after that, my trip kick started because I was in the zone after that. Ready to check out of the first hotel. Now I'm gonna be going to a hostel for a cheaper stay. Best place to meet people is hostel. And to my surprise, a lot of people were solo traveling. We all went out to Bangla Road to party and it was so much fun. That whole road gets lit at night, Thailand style. That was when I felt like, okay, this is gonna be fun. A lot of Thai food. The next day, I wanted to, you know, have some time to myself, some alone time, then I would book a hotel room. Also, hostels were really cheap, so if you're on a budget, mixing your hostel stays with one or two days of hotel stays in the middle worked out great for me. No matter where I went, the, I was meeting people left and right, like whether they were solo travelers or they were just people with, in groups or couples. Everyone was on vacation having a good time and really open to interacting. So it made me feel really comfortable. And if you can ride a scooter, that is a blessing. The ferry ride was so amazing from island to island. I think I enjoyed that a lot. So the next place I went to was Koh Panghan and this was where the full moon party happens. Where the ferry landed, I spent a day over there just because I had luggage and I wanted to chill. Um, so I met some people at that hostel and there was a food market, like a Saturday night food market. I know that this might not be for everybody, but I wanted to experience the culture of Thailand fully. So the receptionist actually got off her job um, at around 6 and she accompanied us in the food market and she kind of guided us through all the different foods um, and I tried this weird worm maggot type thing. Ingredient. Thai ingredient. Mm. What is it oh, exactly? I don't know if it was today, but... Warm? Like a warm? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's You did it? Yeah. Mm. It's okay. Oh, it's not bad. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's kind of like beans. <laughs> <laughs> did you like it's it? Yeah, it's okay. It's interesting. It's a little bit like a crisp. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Felt really cringy doing it, but... It wasn't half bad as I thought. It just tasted like beans and was seasoned and cooked. But yeah, it was a good experience. Skopangan is so tiny and it's so secluded that I think it's better to stay in a hostel where you can meet people who are also there for the same party and kind of vibe right before the full moon party. I actually stayed at this hostel called Wet. They had a nice little pool and it was a party hostel. These hostels usually have bunk beds and you share it with a bunch of people. There's AC, a nice clean washroom and pretty much the essentials. Um, we went for the jungle experience. The 
full moon party was definitely worth it you have to pay a 200 baht entry fee uh, into the area it's on the beach all the bars on the beach they light up with music um, and it's a whole party till morning <laughs> Luckily on this trip, nothing happened to me in terms of spiking or I didn't really meet people who had bad intentions. Um, I, I met nice people throughout my trip so I was very lucky. But I did hear from those people that they saw girls getting spiked. So just be careful, don't leave your drinks unattended, that goes without saying. Decided to go to the neighbouring island which was Koh Tao. Koh Tao I heard was really inexpensive for diving. So that's something that I had on my bucket list. A specific place called Tanod Bay that you can go to and cliff dive from there. It's not supervised, um, so it's like do it at your own risk kind of thing. <laughs> it was quite risky to be honest. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm snorkeling and cliff jumping! So I went really excited, you know, like, yay, I'm gonna go jump from a big rock. But I didn't realize that in order to reach that rock, I have to actually swim through the ocean and this ocean is filled with marine life okay so all kinds of things that i've not seen before really freaking out because i was doing this alone first of all there was no moral support or guidance or help uh, it wasn't a trained environment it was the wild ocean it took me a good two hours to really like brace myself have like 10 panic attacks i'm not even joking i was like <laughs> people thought that i was just tired from swimming but actually i was having panic attacks in the middle of the water that was one of the scariest things i have ever done in my life snorkeling and the jumping and the rope climbing actually and got a little souvenir marking the day there was one rope hanging i don't know who hung it there but Everyone was just climbing that one rope without slipping from my wet toes on this rock and dying. Um, and I took my time and I somehow made it on top of that rock. And each time I would pass a little bit part of me that would be like, okay, you know, you've come so far, come back tomorrow, you can do it again, you've done great today, let's quit. But then another part of me would go like, listen, you've done this already, are you really gonna come here and go through this fear again tomorrow? just to do this just do it it's not that far you've done this just do a little more little more rather than injuring myself i decided to go slow and then there was just a jump which was a little scary but not as scary as what i just did for myself and everyone was kind of cheering encouraging me and then i just made the jump and after that i was chilling in the ocean i wasn't as scared definitely a memory that i'll have for the rest of my life one thing to remember is don't step on any coral especially the spiky ones just do not and after i got over that initial fear i was like I can't just be scared of the ocean and say I love the beach. Like it doesn't work like that. So now I gotta do my diving license and really dive all the way to the bottom. Diving instructors and courses right in the hotel. If you visit Koh Tao, definitely stay at Karabao. This place is amazing. Everybody's so helpful. You can do your diving course here. And they have a swimming pool. So they train you in the swimming pool and then you go into the water with the instructor and other people who are with you. Um, doing the same course <laughs> so it's like a group experience everyone some people are doing it for the first time everyone's learning and at the end of the three-day course you get your certificate so that's what I did um, it was really good because we got a nice discount and um, our stay was free because we were doing the course it was a great bonding experience with people from all over the world Otao was one of my favorite islands to be honest it was not too big not too small not too touristy not too isolated it had a party area, um, but it also had really beautiful beaches and silent resort feels. Um, I think it was like really perfect, so I would definitely go back there. It was one of my favorites. Now, I could have done Koh Samui, which was next door, but my brother was coming for a mini vacation and he wanted to see Koh Samui, so I had to kind of detour and go to Bangkok instead. Going to Bangkok was a long journey. It was like a 10-hour journey by bus, but it didn't feel very strenuous. It was quite chill because the bus was so good so comfortable and they would stop every few hours to like eat and stretch your legs i guess use the washroom even though i have travel sickness um i did not feel sick throughout going from an island experience to bangkok was really interesting because bangkok was so much like a typical um party 
touristy city where there's little little bit of pollution, lots of traffic, lots of people, and the only thing you can really do there is party. I had a great time in Bangkok too. Um, Khao San Road was where I partied. My hostel was nearby, so I was lucky like that. Although I would be extra careful in Bangkok because Bangkok is a little shady. <laughs> there was a time when I kind of got scammed. I feel a little bit. So I was walking on the road. This Thai lady who seemed old and like sweet <laughs> suggested a boat tour around Bangkok. They have a huge river. Take a boat ride in, and they kind of give you like a tour uh, and stop in different places. So that you can um, stop for a while, view like the Big Buddha and all of that. I was like, okay, what better way to explore Bangkok than do that? And she told me that because I don't know Thai, uh, if I go to the tourist place, they're gonna charge me three thousand. But she's gonna help me out and send me to the local Thai entry, and the tuk-tuk driver can speak on my behalf, and it'll be fifty percent off. So it'll be one thousand five hundred baht. I still found that a little expensive, but I was like. Okay, I'm getting a 50% off. It's a two-hour boat ride. Fine, you know, let's do it. The water of that river was literally nali ka pani. <laughs> There was nothing fun about it. It was not worth the money. And the end destination totally opposite where I got in. So I had to catch another boat, pay another 20 baht, and then find my way back. So overall, it was not a good experience. Wouldn't recommend it. And later on, I found out you could actually negotiate down to 500 baht. Anyway, so maybe she was trying to help, but not to her best ability. I don't know. So there, my younger brother joined me for the next two weeks. Lots of food markets. Tried a lot of different foods. We wanted to do like a rooftop buffet because that's what Bangkok is famous for. But um, everything was either booked or too expensive. We found this really cool isolated buffet place. It was like I think it was like a Korean buffet. You basically can cook your own food. So we really, really hogged <laughs> that day. Uh, it was the best meal of our lives. You wouldn't have in a regular buffet in like a five-star hotel. Something on both our bucket lists was to do skydiving. I always wanted to do this and they have skydiving in Bangkok, Pattaya and Rayong. It was the cheapest you'll find compared to other places in the world. One of the cheapest. Literally give you like a five-second training. Like all you have to do is to stay as like a banana. <laughs> and then they will tap you on your shoulder and then you can kind of let go and there'll be another person in front of you taking your video. So we went for the video and photo because it was like a one-time memory. of a lifetime so I was really ticking off all my bucket list items after that um, it was around the time of my birthday which is December 23rd I wanted to do something completely opposite on my birthday and just treat myself to luxury we went to Koh Samui next and over there I booked this luxurious resort the view was breathtaking they had like two infinity pools where you could see the ocean from very very relaxing so I think it was perfect for that moment. I think there are better islands than Koh Samui, but if you are looking to relax with like beautiful views, then Koh Samui is great for that. Our next destination was Krabi. Krabi was kind of a mix of Koh Tao with Phuket. It's actually one of the cheapest places in the whole of Thailand. I would recommend staying at Ao Nang and not Krabi Town because there's not much to do in Krabi Town. It's more residential, but Ao Nang is a little more towards tourists, so there are things to do in hostels. 
the emerald lake and the hot water springs that are really famous we actually wanted to budget ourselves and not take the tour because the tours were expensive we basically rode the bike all the way one hour to the hot springs paid 200 baht for the national park entry and it was amazing that hot spring was actually warm like really hot slash warm and you could really relax there it felt like a free nature spa uh, we couldn't go to the emerald lake but that's fine we saved around 1000 500 baht or something so per person so that was a great saving and then later we realized that we could take tips from these two places ask them what they have in store and if we could kind of do it ourselves then we just take our bike and go there ourselves next we went to riley beach sorry not riley it's riley beach we pay 100 baht and it's like a five minute ferry ride from our nang beach um to this isolated beach which is supposed to be the most beautiful beach in grabby and boy did it not disappoint Riley turned out to be actually my favorite place in Thailand. It would be Riley Beach, Koh Tao. So Riley Beach, there are like two sides. One is where you enter in is like all resorts, very beautiful with rock structures that Thailand is famous for. Um, and it's very resorty. But then when you walk in towards east, there's like hostels and parties and very inexpensive. Someone at the reception actually told us there's like a lagoon that uh, you can hike to and um, you can rock climb too actually so we were really intrigued by that you can actually pay for rock climbing and safety gear and stuff but we wanted to do it the hard way <laughs> so we went unsupervised where a lot of people were going to um, basically you rock climb with a rope be very careful because it's not supervised so if you slip if you're not like good with your feet or confident enough just don't do it okay i couldn't go all the way down to the lagoon because it was very very steep but my brother went and did it and it was a little overrated because the water was like greenish brown clear but greenish brown it wasn't like blue like a lagoon you know so i was kind of okay not having to do that whole dangerous thing i just i was taking everything very slow i was doing it but doing it slow the other side of the beach which is the princess cave and that was again really beautiful. The sunset was gorgeous over there. So the hostel that we were staying at had something every day. There was like boat parties, pop quiz night, there was bar crawls, um, pool tables, you name it. Obviously I was with my younger brother and he is not much of a partier. So I left the party for later. When he leaves, I decided I would come back. We also uh, went paddle boating. You can rent a paddle boat for like 300 baht and take it for an hour around the rock structures and the water is beautiful so crystal clear of oh, love it the next place we went to was Koh Phi Phi. i thought it was gonna be a really chill island turns out it's actually quite similar to Koh Phangan and more crazy people were on the street like really narrow streets unlike other islands that you can take your bike and just go yourself Koh Phi Phi really has more to do with mini islands around it so the best way to experience Koh Phi Phi is to take a tour this is one time i would say take a tour um, I would take the full day tour. We paid around 1,200 baht per person. We went to around seven different places. We did uh, snorkeling in most places. Uh, there was Monkey Beach. Bamboo Beach was the most beautiful waters I have seen. Definitely walk towards the other side where the beach is super, super clean. Kopile and then the famous Maya Bay. Um, Maya Bay has a different 400 uh, baht entry fee so that was included in the tour. You can choose to opt out of it. Honestly, I just wanted to go and see it because it's so famous. I was not going to come there again so I'm like might as well. But now that I've seen it, I don't think it was worth it. You couldn't go in the water because the marine life is endangered or something right now. Honestly, after looking at all these beautiful places in PP itself on that tour, um, Maya Bay just seemed just like every other place. So for me, it wasn't worth it as such. And at the end of the tour, you get to do a night dive with uh, the planktons. Couldn't capture this on camera because it was so faint. But when we did dive into the water, it was a little cold at night. Um, and you move around a little bit, you'll be able to see tiny specks of light. Um, and it was just an amazing experience. After that, there was New Year's and uh, my brother hadn't seen Phuket. So we came back to Phuket, uh, which was kind of on the way. This was the last destination for him. And we celebrated New Year's over there. There was a whole scene on Patong Beach with fireworks, music. Bangla Road was lit. Hey, flew off from 
Phuket and I continued my solo journey ahead. So after this, I had pretty much explored all of Thailand that I wanted to. I didn't want to go towards uh, the north, which is like Pai and Chiang Mai. They are more forest areas and more, I think, a little more residential mountain regions. Um, so I was pretty much done with my trip. And at this point, all I, all that was left to do is go back to the places that I wanted to just spend some more time in and I loved. In the literal definition of if you could go back, which place would you go to? <laughs> I did that. I went to Riley Beach. In Riley Beach, this time I partied to my fullest desire. Met some amazing people there. Did some embarrassing backflips that I were very embarrassing. <laughs> I got my first tattoo as well. Ow. Mm -hmm. um, towards the end, I wanted to do the really tiny islands that no one really talks about. Um, Koyao Nai and Koyao Yai. So Koyao Yai had this really nice beach. Two islands meet and there's like a path that you can walk in the middle of the ocean and it's really shallow. Relaxed, lounged all day, watched the sunset, chilled, ate some good food and that was a whole day of doing nothing. It was beautiful. <laughs> trip is coming to an end in the last four days i decided to go to phuket because my flight was from there to vancouver so i was like okay what is this one thing that i haven't done and the one thing was to go to a proper boat party not like a small boat like a proper big boat um and jump from the top of that boat <laughs> My mind works in mysterious ways, okay? So I just really, really wanted to, to do that. And Phuket has a lot of boat parties. So I booked one of these boat parties. I ended up meeting a few people. The boat had slides on the back of the boat, which was amazing. The slides really go into the ocean. Like, how amazing is that? So there was like a whole party going on on the lower deck. The boat stops at two destinations. We could slide down. And at the end of the night, the whole foam party on the boat. There was like foam insanely coming out and people dancing. An amazing amazing end to my Thailand trip. I had finally done everything and the last two days I took a nice little hotel um, and just relaxed. Just stayed in bed and chilled. It's so important to do these solo travel trips because they really do teach you how capable you are like they say and then you walk in the world differently. You radiate is what I felt like. I learned so many new things from new people and that was the end of my trip.